Ozone is very rare in our atmosphere, averaging about three molecules of ozone for every 10 million air molecules. In spite of this small amount, ozone plays a vital role in our atmosphere. Ozone is mainly found in two regions of the Earth's atmosphere. Most ozone, about 90%, resides in the layer that begins between 6 and 10 miles above the Earth's surface and extends up to about 30 miles. The region of the atmosphere is called the stratosphere. The ozone in this region is commonly known as the ozone layer. The remaining ozone in this lower region of the atmosphere, which is commonly called the troposphere. The ozone molecules in the upper atmosphere and the lower atmosphere are chemically identical. Because they all consist of three oxygen atoms and have the chemical formula O3. However, they have very different roles in the atmosphere and very different effects on humans and other living beings. Stratospheric ozone, sometimes referred to as good, good ozone, plays a beneficial role by absorbing most of the biologically damaging ultraviolet sunlight, called UVB, allowing only a small amount to reach the Earth's surface. The absorption of the ultraviolet radiation by ozone creates a source of heat, which actually forms the stratosphere itself. Ozone this plays a key role in the temperature structure of the Earth's atmosphere. Without the filtering action of the ozone layer, more of the sun's UVB radiation would penetrate the atmosphere and would reach the Earth's surface. Many experimental studies of plants and animals and clinical studies of humans have shown the harmful effect of excessive exposure to, to UVB radiation. It went over. You need to the dual role of ozone leads to two separate environmental issues. There is concern about increases in ozone in the, in the troposphere. Near surface ozone is a key component of photochemical smog, a familiar problem in the atmosphere of many cities around the world. Higher amounts of surface, higher amounts of surface level ozone are increasingly being observed in rural areas as well. There is also widespread scientific and public interest and concern about loss of ozone in the stratosphere. Ground-based and satellite instruments have measured decreases in the amount of stratos stratospheric ozone in our atmosphere. Over some parts of Antarctica, up to 60% of the total head amount of ozone is depleted during Antarctic spring. This phenomenon is known as the Antarctic ozone hole. In the Arctic polar regions, similar processes occur that have also led to significant chemical depletion of the column ozone during late winter and spring in seven out of the last 11 years. The ozone loss from January through the late March has typically been 20 to 25 percent and shorter period losses have been higher depending on the meteorological conditions encountered in the Arctic atmosphere. Through an the sun is a cauldron of blazing hot gases. For more than four and a half billion years, its heat has kept us alive. It's true. But along with that warmth, there lurks a hidden danger. Deadly ultraviolet rays, or UVs, that can harm all life on our planet. Luckily, we're protected by a brave little band of defenders at the very edge of space. The ozone that make up our planet's ozone layer. Despite their tiny size, our ozone defenders are amazingly strong and smart. They let in the sun's life-giving warmth, whilst keeping out the deadly UV rays. And things might have gone on this way forever, were it not for a new threat rising up from below. Chlorofluorocarbons, better known as CFCs, are the chemicals that cool our air conditioners and refrigerators. CFCs are safe inside their machines, but once they escape, they begin a 25-year journey up to the top of the atmosphere, where they attack the ozone layer without mercy. And once the ozone molecules have to fight the UVs and the CFCs, it's just a matter of time until the ozone layer weakens and breaks. <laughs>